good afternoon folks. You probably don't recognize me without the famous fedora on my head. I am Paul Brake, your Canadian Libertarian. One of many Canadian Libertarians and the movement is growing. As people learn about Libertarian philosophy, they quickly realize it is the only political philosophy that makes sense. Now I'm out here at the park so with the kids and we're all playing in the splash pad so you'll probably hear lots of background noises but they're all happy noises. And on the topic that we've been, one of the topics we've been discussing and getting into is uh, law and uh, crime and punishment and rights and how they all tie together. And on this little chat I'd like to discuss the nurse in Edmonton, CFB Edmonton, who was just charged and fined $1,500 for selling steroids to soldiers. How dare she? Everybody keeps talking about, oh, she should go to jail, yada, 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 yada. Really, let me put uh, this all in perspective for you. What occurred between her and those soldiers was a voluntary exchange of trade. Now, the soldiers are under contract with the military, and one of the stipulations of that contract, which again is a voluntary exchange, is to not consume certain drugs. Now, they're under contract to do that, so they can be held. And the stories are giving no uh, information about that. But they are talking about the nurse. Now, if the nurse had stolen those steroids, then that would be a crime because then she obtained property which she had no right to obtain and then sold that, which meant that she entered into a fraudulent contract with the people who bought those steroids from her. If she stole those steroids, then she must be held accountable for that and forced to pay remedy of all harm and damages to the people who she stole from. Now, if she obtained those steroids without coercion or fraud, she went to another country, bought them, whatever the situation is, then she has every moral right to own them. Because, once again, we look at the negative rights. It, it, it remains a right if you could still do it and, and you're the only person left on earth. If she was the only human being on earth, she could still possess those steroids. And she could still offer to sell those steroids, there just would be no one to buy them. That becomes a positive right. She has the right to sell them as long as somebody wants to fulfill the duty of buying them. That's a voluntary exchange under contract law. Uh, one of the things under contract law says contract must be legal, but once again, is it? are we talking law or are we talking statute? Now the law, if she owned them, she has the right to sell them. Contract's legal. Statute as to what you're allowed to own and what you're not allowed to own, well that contravenes your human rights. And anything that contravenes your human rights must be abolished in Canada, period. That's one of the things the libertarians want to do. We want to abolish everything that infringes on your natural human rights. And property ownership is one of those. The right to engage in a voluntary exchange of trade is another. So she engaged in a voluntary exchange of trade with the soldiers. Thus, no crime was committed as long as she owned the steroids in the first place. So to call for her to be jailed, to fine her, is not freedom, it's tyranny. The opposite of freedom and liberty is tyranny. One group has arbitrarily decided what others are allowed to possess and what they are allowed to do with those possessions. That is called tyranny. The government has no more right to say what you are allowed to own than I do. For the government is an elected body. We elected them, that means that we transferred a mandate to them and we cannot transfer a mandate of rights greater than a mandate that we personally have. So if I don't have the right to take from you, I cannot give my government the right to take from you. If I do not have the right to say what you are allowed to own, my government doesn't have the right to say what you are allowed to own. If I don't have the right to say what you are allowed to buy and sell, then my government doesn't have the right. Under common law, to dictate what you are allowed to own, what you are allowed to buy, and what you are allowed to sell, and for how much. And if I can have no claim of equity upon you, 
for a voluntary trade between you and another individual, then neither does the government. So the government then has no right to any form of taxation on your trades and your exchanges, provided that you are not using any of the government's facilities to do that. So if the government hasn't facilitated the sale, they can't tax it, they can't license it. And the other thing about licensing is a license is a permission from the government to do what would otherwise be illegal. How, may I ask you, can a government give you permission to commit a crime? They can't do that. So licenses have to automatically be voided right from the, the onset because they're hypocrisy and they're, they're non sequitur in themselves. So with this sale of steroids, the woman should only be charged if she used coercion or theft to obtain the products that she sold to those soldiers. If she did not, then it was a fair human rights ownership and a fair human rights voluntary exchange of trade of finances for product, which the government and nobody else has a right to restrict. And the problem with our economy today is all these pre-restrictions on our rights and our liberties. And that has to end. So think about this from the first principles of the libertarians, the first principles of human rights, the first principles of rights. And then act. Call your MPs, etc. Get out there, talk about this. Because the libertarians have the intent on fixing these problems by getting into the offices of the provinces and of the, the country, federally. We are running candidates, we are forming parties, and we want to fix the problems. So think libertarian and think libertarian thoughts.